Hello and welcome to the first in a three or four part series on preparing for the AP Computer Science Principles Performance Task. Now, one of the most important things about this task is that you thoroughly read and understand all of the instructions that were hopefully given to you by your teacher, but these videos are going to break some of those instructions down to make them a little bit more simple. But if there is ever a conflict between what I say and what's in the instructions, go with the instructions. I'm not perfect at this. So the first thing that you need in your program is a list. So that's where we're going to start. I'm going to go ahead and cover three different ways you can make a list for your AP performance task, um, starting easily enough with just making one and setting it up on your own. Okay. So I'm going to start by going to show text and to make a list is just the same as to make a variable VAR. And then you come up with a name for it. I'm going to call it number list. I'm going to set it equal to now to make it a list. You use a square bracket and I'm just going to throw some numbers in there. 13, 32, 0, 98, 154. Each one is separated with a comma. And of course, semicolon at the end, boom, we've got a list. Now, don't worry about this triangle. It's just because we have not used this list yet, but that's the first way you can make a list nice and easy. Now, because my class specifically is more comfortable using the code.org blocks rather than text, I'll go ahead and do the same thing using blocks. As you can see, I'm in the variables tab and I grab a quick variable. We're going to call this one a names list. And once again, once you're in the place where you put the initial value, all you got to do is put in a bracket, put in some names. Now, remember, if you are using words or strings, you need to put them in quotes. So I'm going to say Joe, Alex, Jennifer, Marcus, and don't forget to close that bracket. Okay, so if you need a list of words, this is the way to do it. And once you click out, you'll notice that there are these two arrows at the end of the list. If I click the right arrow, it gives me a new space to put in a, a new value. And if I click the left arrow, it will remove values from the list. So that's the first way you can do it. Not necessarily the best way for this task, I think, but it is probably the easiest. The second way that you can generate a list very easily is by using the pre-generated databases on code.org or whatever it is that you're using, if it has one. So here I'm going to go into data, this data tab here, and I'm just going to pick something at random. We'll go ahead and take, I don't know, geography, U US states, import. So now we've got this table of US states and I can just grab the state names and then I've got a list of all the names of all the states. Yeah. So I'm going to go back into code. Once again, I'm going to grab a variable, go ahead and put some space between those and we'll call this state names. And all I got to do is go into the data tab, go to get column. We will choose us states and we will choose state name. I now have a variable called state names. We're going to make a watcher for it so that you can see how it works. When I run it, as you can see, all of the state names are now in a big list, so I can utilize that if I want. As a side note, if you do use a pre-generated database, make sure that you put an attribution in your comments, letting the folks over at College Board know where exactly you got your data from. You are not going to include those notes in the personal performance review, but you do want to make sure it's in there on your full code submission. And finally, and the way that I recommend going about this is you can set up a user interface for the user to input the list because one of the requirements for the performance task is to demonstrate input. This is a perfect chance to do that. So I'm just going to remove all this stuff for now. 
and we're gonna go into design mode. And I'm gonna make a very, very simple um, interface so that a user can create a list themselves. So I will start with a little text input. We'll call it number, or we'll call it list input. Remember, it's important to have good names for your elements. I'm gonna grab a couple of buttons. We will call this button the add button. Add to list. And then I'm gonna make a text area down here to keep track of the list we've got. That way we've got both input and output already settled. So now that I've got all these, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to code and we are going to actually go into UI controls and we are going to make an on event. When the add button is clicked, we want whatever number is in here or word or whatever to be added to the list in this text area. So when the add button is clicked, here's what's gonna happen. Well, we're gonna start by declaring our list variable before the on event. So we will call this one number list because I'm gonna be making a list of numbers, but you can make whatever you want. And we will start with it being empty. So just a couple of brackets to show that it's an empty list. When the add button is clicked, we want, say somebody puts in the number 27, we want them to click the button and then the number will appear here and to be part of the number list, yeah? So we're gonna go down and we're going to find append item, which adds an item to the end of a list. We'll drop that in there. The name of the list is number list. And the thing that we're adding is whatever is in this, uh, this text area. So we're gonna go to UI controls. We're going to go to get number. and we're getting it from the list input. So that should add the, um, the number to the list. Let's try it. So we're gonna call this number list. Currently empty. If I run this and add the number one, add to list, boom, there it is. Annoyingly, I have to delete this manually. But as you can see, now there's a 26 on there. There's a 100 on there. So we're able to have the user generate the list, okay? Now that is technically enough, but we're gonna clean this up a little bit so that A, it displays the list as it's being made, and B, it clears out the text area when it's done so that the user doesn't have to do that on their own. So after it appends the item, we're gonna go ahead and set text of the list input to just quote, quote, because we want it to, to zero out, to empty out. And then we want to set the text of the text area, which really should have a better name. Let's change that right now. Instead of just calling it text area, we'll call it list output and what we want to do is we want it to show the list so i'm going to say number list dot join which means that it is going to be joined together with a comma and a space in parentheses so in between each member of the list there's going to be a comma and then a space so let's try it again. I'll put in a one, add to list. There it is, there it's gone. We'll go ahead and put in 27 as well. Add to list, there it is. 100, 125, negative nine, whatever. We now have not only our list covered, but also a visible input and output, which are both requirements for the AP performance task.
And then finally, just because it doesn't take that long, I also want to add a button to clear the list so that someone can get rid of everything that's in there, yeah? Notice that I'm making this a very, very basic design. You don't have to make your design mode pretty. Um, if you have time at the end, after you're done making it fit the rubric, then you can make it look nice. We're gonna call this button the clear button. It's gonna say clear list. We're gonna go back to code. We're gonna set another on event. Again, I like to put a few um, spaces in between my uh, chunks of, of code just so it's easier for me to see. And on event, when the clear button is clicked, all I want is to set number list to bracket bracket. And I want to set the text of both the list input and the list output to blank. Technically, I could make a function for this, like a, like a screen update function, but I don't think it's entirely necessary. Done. So now I can put in one, two, three, four, five, and if I hit clear list, it empties it out both in the watcher and on the app. And that, my friends, is how you make a list in code.org. Now, once you have the code that creates your list, you need to grab a screenshot of that and you're gonna upload it as part of your personal project review. So I'm gonna use the snipping tool available on Windows. And I'm just going to A, make sure I'm zoomed in nice and close. And I am going to grab just the segment of code where the list is created. And that's gonna be one of the pieces that I'm gonna be submitting to College Board. The other piece I'm gonna be submitting is the list being used in the program, which obviously I don't have here. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how to create a list for your um, AP performance task. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments and I'll see you next time.